The objective within this lesson is to add fractions making like units numerically. That is, we'll be using a numbers approach. One third plus one fourth. You'll notice that the denominators are not the same. In other words, we are not talking about like units. So we work out equivalent fractions. For one third and one fourth, we'll make like units. And in this case, we'll use the other denominator. So we had one third. And what we'll do is we'll multiply by the other denominator of four. And with one fourth, we'll multiply by the other denominator of three. And remember, we're adding these. One times four is four, and three times four is 12. One times three, and that should be over four times three. And I'll write in that multiplication sign there. One times three is three, and four times three is 12. So we got an equivalent fraction for one third of four twelfths, and an equivalent fraction of one fourth as three twelfths. And since we have like units now, we can just go ahead and add the numerators, four plus three, which is seven, and the denominator stays the same. So that one third plus one fourth is equal to seven twelfths. Seven twelfths is in the simplest form, so we are done with this problem. Here we have another problem, one half plus three fifths. We need to get a common denominator. So we start with the one half here, and we'll multiply. And in this case, we're multiplying by five, which is the other denominator, so that we get the denominator and a common denominator in this case of so two times five, which will be 10. For that fraction three fifths, we want that common denominator of 10, so that's why it's five times two. And in the numerator, we have three times two. Let's go ahead and get the equivalent fraction for one half by going and solving this work here. One times five is five and two times five is 10. The equivalent fraction for three fifths, three times two is six, and five times two is 10. So we have five tenths plus six tenths, which is equal to 11 tenths. 11 tenths is not in simplest form. We should be thinking about 11 divided by 10 10 goes into 11 one whole time, and we have one tenth left over. The other way to look at that is that 11 tenths does equal 10 tenths plus one tenth, which is one plus one tenth, which would give us one and one tenth. So for our problem, one half plus three fifths, it does equal one and one tenth. Here I have the problem 4 ninths plus 7 eighteenths. Now if I took the same strategy as I've been taking previously and multiplied by the other denominator, I'd have 18 times 9. And as you see here, that would be 162. And then so I'd be working with really big numbers. Now what I can do though is I recognize that this is 18 and this is 9. And I know that 9 times 2 is 18. What I can actually do is to get that common denominator of 18. If I multiplied by 2 in the denominator, then what I need to do is to multiply by 2 in the numerator as well. So that 4 ninths is actually equal to 8 eighteenths. And remember, I'm adding that together with 7 eighteenths. So 8 plus 7 eighteenths is equal to 15 eighteenths. Now you'll see here that 15 eighteenths is not in simplest form because I can divide the numerator and denominator both by three. 
15 divided by 3 is 5, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. So that 4 ninths plus 7 eighteenths equals 5 sixths. So as you see again, I looked at that denominator, which was bigger in this case, looked at some multiples of 9, and knew that it was 9 and then 18, and using that numbers approach, I only had to make one equivalent fraction to get a common denominator, and then expressing my result again, I had to express my result in simplest form. All right, your turn to try. For this one here, the answer is going to be bigger than 1, so do express your answer in as a mixed number, and then make sure that it's in simplest form as well. Do your work. Did you recognize that we can get from fourths to eighths? So that we only have to write one equivalent fraction? I'll show this to you both ways in case you chose a denominator where it is that you had multiplied by the other denominator. So we have 7 times 4 in this case then, and then 8 times 4. Now the easier approach I'll show you in a second. 3 times 8 is 24, that's over 32, plus 28 over 32, 24 and 28 is 52 over 32, which would equal 1 and 20 30 seconds. And I'm going to do my work over in this direction. If I divided by, let's see, 2, let's actually let's divide by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 32 divided by 4 is 8. So that 3 fourths plus 7 eighths will equal 1 and 5 eighths. Now that simpler approach would have been just to go 3 fourths and then times 2 in the numerator times 2 in the denominator to get 6 eighths plus 7 eighths, which equals 13 eighths. And we do have to simplify that. An improper fraction is not in simplest form. 13 eighths is 13 divided by 8. 8 goes into 13 one whole time with a remainder of 5. That is why it is 1 and 5 eighths. Just like that same answer there, this approach here again is simpler because I chose than this approach here. I chose that denominator of 8. Here I have one last problem to show you. You'll notice I actually have three fractions that I'm trying to add together. And so this really doesn't change our approach to solving this, these types of problems. We just have to get a common denominator for all three. And then so we need multiples. We need multiples of 5, we need multiples of 4, which also multiples of 2 as well. Now if we start with the 5s, that's 5, 10, 15, and 20. And then if we start with the 4s, it would be 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. And then if we went with the 2s, it would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and then finally 20. Our least common multiple, is what it's called, would be 20. And you basically just have to find something where it is that's common. And then if you don't find this least common multiple, what will happen is that when you add them together, you'll have to simplify. Let's get equivalent fractions. And then again, we have denominators of 20. So we have to get from 1 -fifth to 20. We would multiply by 4 there. And then so that's 1 times 4, which is 4. So 1 -fifth does equal 4 twentieths. I'm going to show my work here for 3 fourths. To get to 20 -ths, I'll multiply by 5 in the denominator. And I do the same thing in the numerator. And for 1 half, remember there's 3 add ends here, I'd have to multiply by 10. And by doing so, I do so both in the denominator and in the numerator. So my equivalent fractions are 4 20 plus 15 20 
plus 10 twentieths. And then my denominator will stay the same. And what I'm doing is I'm adding 4 with 15 and 10. 4 plus 15 is 19, plus 10 is 29, so I have 29 twentieths. I should be thinking of 29 divided by 20, which would be a 1 with the remainder of 9. And then so that mixed number is 1 and 9 twentieths. There's my original problem again, with just a little bit of work that I had shown for this 4 twentieths. It's 1 fifth plus 3 fourths plus 1 half does equal 1 and 9 twentieths. You'll notice that 9 twentieths portion of the mixed number does not need to be simplified. Do remember when you're adding and subtracting fractions to put answers within simplest form. And that key again is to get like units and that common denominator.